only wish I had started my channel way back when I first thought about it in 2016. That's eight years ago. Eight. I let it go for eight years. Don't do that. I can't even begin to imagine how my life would be different if I had started back then even a few years after that, if I'd only taken the leap. Hey everyone, my name is Samantha. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. First of all, I have to get this out of the way. This is inspired by another video by Camilla Ray and her video was literally just the reasons why YouTube changed her life, even though she only had like less than 500 subscribers. What I was doing was planning a video for analytics for a year on YouTube and I was looking into titles and tags and just ideas about what to include and I came across this video of Camilla's. It got me thinking. I watched it and I was like, yeah, everyone's got a different story and a different perspective just based off this exact phrase of the title of this video. It's kind of like a tagged video in a way because even though it's not technically a tagged video, it, it was definitely inspired by her video and I just thought I don't have the same experience or journey as, as she does but I could definitely relate 100%. By the time I started writing everything down it got way too big and I thought oh, this has to be its own video. I encourage you if you are watching this and you're in my similar shoes to me you do one of these as well and just share your, your journey and your experience and why YouTube has changed your life. For those of you who want to compare your channel where you're at to where I'm at if you've got a similar amount of followers or you're in a similar journey and you want to compare the data or it's just something you don't need to hear right now but if you do click on the link at the end of the video or in the description and check that video out so you can also see where my analytics are right now after 12 months on YouTube. So I probably should go into a little bit about me considering this is about why YouTube has changed my life. One year ago I uploaded my first official video on YouTube. Fast forward to today after about 55 videos I can say that being on YouTube has definitely changed my life and been one of the best decisions that I could ever have made for myself. I am currently on um, only about 700 subscribers and I say only really casually but I am really <laughs> jumping up and down inside <laughs> it's taken a while to get to this many subscribers well it's taken 12 months <laughs> Well, duh. Anyway, I'm I'm really proud of that. I'm so proud of myself. I've stayed mostly consistent, and I've made some pretty good, pretty good videos. I'm very proud of a lot of my videos that I'm all of them that I've put out, but some more than others. I've put more effort in. I've actually learned a lot in a really short space of time. YouTube has really changed my life for the better. And even if even if my subscriber count didn't move up at all, and I just kept producing content and putting it out in the world, it wouldn't bother me just because of what I've gotten out of this experience and what I will keep getting. Rewind slightly, just to give you a little bit more context. Even before I became a YouTube creator, content creator, I'm a millennial, I'm 36. I wasn't, luckily, I think, in the era of growing up with social media. I was in high school when MySpace or Facebook became a thing. I remember getting my first Instagram account and it was solely to edit photos. Cue YouTube. <laughs> it's giving me creative outlet. Already improved like mental health, my self-esteem, creativity, my goodness and just like my life in general. Up until late 2019 I had a career as a fashion model. I lived and worked in London and Sydney and before that Melbourne. I was doing that for about a decade and I decided I just needed a change. It was just before COVID luckily and maybe one day I'll go into the ins and outs and why I left the modeling industry. Started working in office administration so I couldn't get any further removed. After a while though I felt starved of creativity. I had no creative outlet whatsoever after doing photography as well as a side hustle and being a model and then going from that to nothing it was it was kind of slowly crept up on me that I need something creative in my life. Back when I wanted to start, I was looking at videos around how to start a channel, what you should be doing, what you should, what tools you have to have. I was just curious about the whole thing and if it was going to be worth my time. And look, 
I really should have just started. I was just scared. I was really scared of failing. I didn't, I was worried about what we, people might think. A huge part of my career as a model was focused on how I looked, which is probably also why the thought of having a YouTube channel scared me a lot. There's nowhere to hide in videos. Photos are easy. You can just pick the one that's the most flattering. In my case, with professional and paid jobs as an element of retouching. Basically what my whole career revolved around was picking the most flattering and best photos. Talking to a camera, that's just motion. I don't know, I just, I felt like I couldn't hide. I was just scared. The funny thing is after I decided to start actually filming YouTube videos and I started obviously editing said videos, something interesting happened. I realized that whatever I was self-conscious about, what I thought was how I looked or sounded, was actually all just in my head, most of it kind of pleasantly surprised it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be and I didn't want to hide and I was proud of what I'd achieved and edited and put out and at first you don't get any views it doesn't really matter and if you get no views then you can just shut up shop and be like oh well it didn't work <laughs> uh, that's what I initially thought the topics that I chose to do videos about I, I kind of knew my stuff I knew what I was talking about yes it did take me forever to film my first videos <laughs> hours for one video it seems weird talking to a camera alone by yourself in a room I mean I've got cats so I'm not alone <laughs> <laughs> but after a while you just get used to staring at the lens and you kind of just feel like you are talking to a friend. My reviews or my advice or my storytelling or whatever it was, I actually was like, oh, this is not such a bad idea. I just wanted to show that I'm more than just a model or more than what I was like when I was modeling, when I was too, too scared to speak in an Instagram story because I didn't want to sound a certain way or I was I just didn't want that's why I never spoke in my Instagram stories can you believe that even if no one watches my videos just the act of me filming them and editing them and being able to watch my life from a third point of view it's given me so much and it's taught me so much about myself that is so invaluable I don't know if what I've chosen to do with my content is going to work down the line or if it's the right choice but I don't care it's it's my journey. I'm not going to archive any videos. It's They'll stay on there. I feel like I have purpose and I am working towards something. It's been a really good challenge for me to commit to something, to be consistent, to improve and gain new skills and try new techniques, new filming, new editing. Just, you have to get over yourself because how you look on camera or how you sound, yes, you can fix some of those things, but there's not a lot you can do to change drastically. So it's just, that's how you are. So it is very confronting at first. The good thing is if you're editing your own videos then you can edit stuff out that you don't like. Every time I had someone, or every time I still have people commenting on my videos and usually commenting something really nice, thanking me in some way or another for the information I've given them or the help or the inspiration or like whatever it is, I just get a real sense of achievement and it's kind of weird that people, random strangers watch me and watch my video however they find it and, and comment. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. And it's really, I, well, I just wasn't sure if that was going to happen for me. Like the little community that you start to build with people that comment and you comment back and yeah, I know, it's just, it's kind of cool. It's really cool. <laughs> Rewind back to when I started. I, I figured out something to talk about. I did my hair and makeup, so I felt really you know presentable and I probably should check in the camera that I am still looking presentable <laughs> you do all the right things you get the lighting right and then I just started and I think my first video like yeah, it took me a few hours to film the editing was shocking because I had to cut out so much and I did a lot of ums and ahs and I do end a lot now instead of arm and ah. <laughs> but in the end, it felt great. I was like, finally, I've done it. Like the first hurdle is the first video. I felt like I achieved so much and it was just the beginning. My first video actually did quite well, believe it or not. What's ironic is one of my best performing videos is me cleaning my cat litter boxes with my hair up in a bun, frizzy, three day hair, no makeup. I think I just had uh, laser on my face which like brings out pigmentation so I had like lots of 
it was a lot going on and it was hot and the air conditioning was on and when I lived in Sydney and it's not like my best finest work either it was very early on edited video and it's like my best best most watched video last time I looked I had 20,000 views on that video it's never too late just start now doesn't matter if it's been eight years or one year or eight months imagine in a few years time you still haven't started a channel and you look back and it turns into 10 years oh well now it's been 10 years like it's never too late just start just do it don't let your dreams be dreams just start filming your first video and upload it and then keep doing that process over and over again and before you know it you'll be 55 videos in and it'll be 12 months and you'll be like, look at me, I did it. Here's to another year. <laughs> Something I wanted to cover really quickly that I wasn't sure about at the time when I started was how much time I have dedicated and happily dedicated, mind you. But oh, I won't lie, I've spent a lot of my free spare time editing, filming, mainly editing, working on my YouTube channel. If you're in this for monetary reasons you don't have any guarantees that it's going to take off for you or it's going to pay off for you because you don't know you just don't know what's going to happen you don't know which video is going to do well for you like some of my favorite videos I've ever done like had 90 views or something that side of it you just have to not use this motivation initially unless you're paying someone to edit videos for you which a lot of you probably won't be you have to like the process of editing videos because it takes a while and it's a learning curve if you don't know how to use video editing or photo editing software i was lucky i already knew how to use that so i already had that skill it wasn't i wasn't like advanced or amazing but i knew how to use Premiere Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro, which is what I use. I started out last year on my lunch break, sitting in my car, editing for an hour so I could maximize my time. But then I would go home and I would do another hour or two every night, not every night, but nearly every night, editing. One day on a weekend I would pick and I would film and like a couple of hours in my afternoons and I usually film around three to four videos depending how long they are and how long I've been talking for. I still do that because I find it's the most efficient way for me to get content out and obviously I do vlogging now as well so I do that um, in and around the sit down video filming but then I also edit on a weekend. I am still sitting in my car on my lunch breaks editing videos i'm also faster at editing now so it doesn't take me as long so i get a bit more done with my time which is a byproduct of doing 50 odd videos in 12 months and i'm also better at filming which speeds up the editing so there's a lot less for me to chop and cut out of my my footage because i am now pretty used to talking to a camera last year i actually resigned from my job that i was in in sydney and i packed up and i moved down back to Tasmania, which is where I'm from, and I've been away for 16 odd years. I had about three months break, three to four months break from, from working. I had a lot more time on my hands to do editing and YouTube and filming and all that sort of thing. So I managed to start getting myself a few weeks ahead of my YouTube schedule, which if there's one thing I can tell you, that is make sure you get ahead <laughs> give yourself at least a week buffer even if you're only uploading once a week upload a week in advance that's all I have to say it's just made my life so much less stressful because I know that I will stick to my schedule and I've only missed a few weeks of like uploads like out of a 12 month period that's pretty good I also use notion to plan everything and keep on top of my workflow and that's also really useful to have a really good system where you track what you're doing so aside from just having it written down or in your head this is foolproof it's i couldn't live without it this is gonna be a really long video hopefully i can edit this down i need to do a section about what i've learned lessons learned oh hello you've just come out of a snooze she's been like over there off camera just there for about two hours while i've been filming what have i learned there's a few things. First and foremost, consistency is key. And I know that everyone says that, but it's true. It's so true. Regular uploads and a consistent posting schedule and being 
think ahead and like a consistent editing schedule doesn't hurt not winging it basically and also knowing when to cut out footage when you're editing like if it's if you're watching it and it's boring it's probably gonna be boring you can't shine a you know what <laughs> Heard. energy levels I'm hopefully keeping up my energy in this video because I've been working on it so trying to keep up my energy level energy levels when filming so I come right into that uh, lens into your screen and I come across as me and I'm not like putting you to sleep especially when you're doing talking head videos where you're just sitting down talking sometimes i noticed after editing i'm like oh god pep up a bit would you just you know like smile while you're talking actually it works if you smile while you're talking it works try to do the thumbnail at the beginning because there's so many times where i've filmed a video and i've been like yeah right done that finally that took me forever i finished that video and i go stop on record and i go right time to pack up and if i've got props or anything or if it's a review or it's an unboxing whatever it is i put that that shit away i go and i do something else and then i go to edit the video and i think ah, oh, you didn't do a bloody thumbnail you Idiota. So many times I've forgotten to take a thumbnail, either, even if it's in the footage and where you just pause and do all that sort of thing so you can take a screen grab or actual photos later on. Thumbnails, do them first. And my intros, I have to try and cut them down a little bit, not ramble on too much and hook the audience in because as we know, it's all about that. It's the title, the thumbnail and the intro that will get people to keep watching your videos and then eventually go, oh, she's pretty cool or he's all right. I might subscribe to him. Scripting. When I first started, I winged it. I had no script. I probably had a few ideas in my head or notes. I just knew what I wanted to talk about. So I didn't really need notes, but I didn't structure my video. So I didn't like go, oh, right. So here's the section on the review and this is the pros and cons. And I just kind of went off what was in my head. And then when I was filming it, it was like, I didn't have any structure to the video. So I didn't know where to put things and what to cut out. And oh. there was also things that I wished I'd mentioned when I was in post, when I was editing. And I was like, oh, if only I'd mentioned that. It does help to have at least something, a plan written down. Then I started using ChatGPT to help me write scripts, but then I ob obviously, that was just sort of for the bones and I had to go back in and edit and move things and everything like that, but it's very useful. So right now I don't really use scripts. I just have dot points and talking points and sentences and some things I really wanna make sure I don't forget to say because I feel like scripts are too rigid and I don't have time to rehearse every bloody script that I'm filming because I'm filming three videos once a week and because of editing and I've got a life and I've got a job and I'm like I don't need to learn a script as well. A lot of my content that I'm doing is stuff I already know about because that's why you're filming videos isn't it? Like I'm not going to pick astrophysics to talk about when I know nothing about astrophysics. It's not hard for it to come like ad lib and off, off the cuff out of my head. It's just like any you know cue cards like that sort of thing. It's just like that. Once I filmed a video and I think it was a 40 minute odd from like start to finish and I thought uh, I just didn't I didn't press record. <laughs> I won't this won't happen however with this camera because there's a big red light staring at me and the screen has a big red square around it but I was filming with my iPhone and I forgot to press record because the only way you can really tell if you're recording on an iPhone is like the little timer at the top is moving and I got to the end and I was like oh I thought I was pressing stop and I was actually starting recording <laughs> luckily though that was a scripted video like back when I was scripting and it was one of the first ones I'd done so I just had to redo it and I had a script so I didn't I did go off ad lib a few times, but you know, I'm over that now. <laughs> I've also only got about three hours in me to film per session. After that, my voice starts to suffer. I get a bit of a sore throat. I don't sit up straight. I lose my, my energy and it's just, 
no, there's no point going after that. You just sit there editing and you think, oh, why did I film this? I often film my intro and my outro at the end. I feel like my best footage is towards the end of the video. So that's why I save it for, because the intro is so important, I save it for the end when I know I'm in, I'm kind of, you know, I'm in the groove. I've already just, just talked about it all. So I kind of know what to say in an intro without even needing any prompting or anything. I just sort of know what I'm talking about. So I just say, just say it. <laughs> when I started, I thought, well, I'm not gonna buy a camera. I don't know if I'm gonna stick with this or I'm gonna enjoy doing this. And I listened to some of the videos and advice on YouTube about starting a channel where they always say, don't go and buy the fanciest equipment. You don't need it. Just film on whatever you've got. And they were right. So I have a iPhone 14 Pro Max. Still, I started with this. I used the front camera, not the back, because like I needed to be able to see myself. I was doing reviews up until the last video that I've posted on here was using the front camera on my iPhone 14 Pro Max. And I think the footage is pretty bloody good. It's not terrible. It's not terrible. There was a time where I was like, right, I need to get serious here. I need to buy a camera. I was convinced that I needed the vlogging camera that all the people who I followed used and that was the Canon G7X Mark III. Everyone, they all used the Mark II and I was, I was like, no, I know better. I'm gonna buy the Mark III. I should have bought the Mark II because that f camera is horrendous. The focusing is disgraceful. I did use that for a while and it didn't last. It didn't, didn't last. So I now have, and this is the first time I'm using my Sony ZV-1 Mark II for a sit down video. So hopefully the footage is okay. I'm not using a microphone, I'm just using the camera. I haven't done anything to the settings. It's just all on automatic and it's pretty good. Are you sure about that? Don't overcomplicate things. I have a tripod. I've also got this that I bought um, to go with my Sony ZV-1 Mark III, but two. And I've got a ring light that I had anyway that I use when I've got bad lighting for sit down videos. That's it, that's all I use. I use Adobe Premiere Pro to edit my videos and I use Adobe Express, the online Canva copy, uh, to edit my thumbnails. I don't use Photoshop, even though I know how to use Photoshop, I don't use InDesign. How do you start a YouTube channel? How? <laughs> Tell me how. Most people, including me, don't take that first step because they're worried what others may think or that they will try and fail. Data and analytics aside, what you get from having a YouTube channel, what YouTube gives you in return for your time and energy and your creative outlet and however good or bad your videos are, it's worth every minute of time spent. Tenfold. The rewards, and that's not even talking, and like I've only got 700 subscribers and I, I can't, I couldn't imagine not being on YouTube. I have topics that I try to stick to and they're mainly because it's what I'm passionate about, passionate about why I started a YouTube channel or what I like to see on YouTube. So if you're not enjoying what you're producing and the content you're making, you're not gonna stick with it. You're not gonna stay doing it. You've gotta have an element of following your gut, doing what you like. Yes, you should eventually look at the analytics and see what works, what people are watching or what people want or where your demographics lie. Initially, you've just got to throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Are my viewers picking up what I'm putting down? The idea is to have a certain viewer in mind and make videos for that viewer. And for me, it's just mainly me. I make videos for what like I want to know. And then hopefully there's people out there like me. Oh, I'm sort of sick of talking. Just start, just do it. Yesterday, you said tomorrow, so just do it. You gotta start somewhere. You don't need to buy any fancy equipment. Put a bit of planning in. Don't just wing it like I did. I mean, you can, but eventually you'll realize that that's not the best way to go about it. <laughs> this last year has been an incredible experience, like a really, fun ride. I am really grateful for each and every one of you who has subscribed or even just watched any of my videos. So if you have, thank you so much. Happy birthday to my channel. Here's to another year of learning and growing a community of like-minded, oh God, that sounds wanky, doesn't it? <laughs> Here's to another year of YouTube and growing 
and getting better and improving whatever else bring it bring it come at me <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe and if you are interested in my analytics right now for where I'm at after 12 months head over to that video which will be on screen thank you so much for watching I will see you in my next video Mwah! bye